set Eagle Eye zero 02 on the following focus points, 1.34.36 and 6.35.23. What are we looking at, Curbcom? We're not sure yet. The previous sats are not resolving. That's why we want to use the Eagle. Of course, yes! This sat could see an ant from space. Okay, it... We're having a problem with autofocus. I'm going to go for manual view and calibration. Head up display connected. Hi, Joel. What the? Curbcom, do you see what I'm seeing? We do, Bill. We do. They truly exist. That's... That's a wormhole. We need to send a probe. Fast. Sir, we have lost the feed from DSC A01. Of course. I didn't expect it would transmit after it went inside. The probe is set to return through the wormhole if it is able. We should launch a new probe. The six month transit needs to be considered. You are right, and I do think we have the resources to send a more sophisticated probe, but still, we need to have the approval of the Council. Dear Committee, as you know, the probe entered the wormhole. We have lost contact, but the probe was not destroyed. Therefore, due to the time transfer needed, I ask that we send a second probe with high performance cameras this time. This space center owes you a lot, Henry. We all trust you here and happily authorize your request. The pad is yours. New World Explorer 2, probe left on. Sir, 
the first probe has re-emerged. Probe survived. We can send more. Injection to curb is successful. Arrival in eight months. Now we know we can recover them. We will send more advanced designs. New Worlds Explorer 2 injection successful. It should arrive when DSC A01 returns to Kerbin. The automated sequences have closed the bay. Go for re-entry. Please survive, little bro. We need your data. Down confirmed. Recover team is on the way. TAX 42, we have recovered the cargo. We are heading back to landing zone 7. Over. Bob, you've got your work cut out for you. My team and I will handle it. What about New Worlds Explorer 2 and 3? New Worlds Explorer 2 is about to enter the wormhole. Followed six months later by New Worlds Explorer 3. We've lost contact with the NWE 3 probe. The next time we will have some images, it's going to change everything. What you are about to see is strictly confidential. New World Explorer 2 and New World Explorer 3 have brought pictures of what seems to be a very similar planetary system like ours. As you can see, our probes managed to photograph five planets, including a supergiant that seems really similar to Jewel, as you can see. But I would like you to focus your attention on the one on the right. A perfect exoplanet with one or two moons, we aren't sure yet, but as exciting as it sounds and it appears like, we won't go any further. Why? When we send probe in the wormhole, we program it in advance so as to return directly from where it came after a little hop through the wormhole. We have no way to communicate with the probe, we can't predict any trajectory, and can't receive anything before it gets back here. It would be way too long, complicated, and cost too much to create an advanced AI that would be able to decide and perform a flight autonomously. We need nature's intelligent adaptive machine, sir. What's that? Kerbals, Mr. President. You want to send Kerbals in that? Where do you hope to find Kerbals who will accept the risk? They are on your left, sir. How much and how long? The how long depends on how much you put on the table. And if I ask you how long, without asking how much? Three years. Then we have an agreement. Dear fellow, we have a masterpiece to create. Let me introduce you to Project Starfinder. Starfinder will be our first manned interstellar ship that will carry our Kerbonauts to and from the wormhole. We have to develop the following things. First, navigation. They will need the most advanced and precise navigation system we have ever created to allow them to quickly analyze the planetary system that they will find, be able to precisely maneuver through it. Step two, habitation. Our Kerbonauts going to spend a lot of time in space, so we need to make sure they stay healthy and comfortable during the journey. Third step, propulsion. 
We're going to need the most efficient engines we have ever created. We need to develop new technologies to give the vessel the ability to travel vast distances. Step four, long life power. We need new era battery performance and a reactor that will not only provide a power supply to the ship, but will also provide power for the propulsion systems. Five and six, structure and lander. We'll have to develop the perfect ship structure and landers that will be able to land on any kind of planet. Finally, our Carbonaut. Even though they are the best, they will need to be completely prepared for their mission. It's not going to be easy for them. They will not be able to discuss the purpose of their mission for now. How can I accept this? It might be the hardest undertaking of Kerbal Kind history, what we are trying to achieve, but we will brave every step to achieve it. Centrifuge E03 have reached zero, 9G. Lando 1, Airflux nominal. We ready for test flight. We reached 1G. Efficiency 97%. Lando 1, test flight has begun. Supra engine static fire is nominal. All step past. Go for assembly of Starfinder. We're undocking from Starfinder. It's fully assembled, and only refueling remains on day of departure. What a ship. I guess we are a gopher quarantine now. I hate this part. You should try to enjoy it. We are going to spend a lot of time in space. In 15 days, this pad will hold a rocket with us inside, ready to depart for the stars. off. I'm retracting the crew gantry. Four, three, two. Here we go. Stay 
two-stage separation. Trajectory for Starfinder Rendezvous. Even though this adventure started three years ago, today is the first leap a 51 million kilometer leap, 51 million kilometers that will lead them directly to the unknown mysteries of the universe and maybe even beyond. This mission required thousands of devoted Kerbals that spent thousands of hours working on each part of this ship to make this adventure possible. But the heroes of today are our four legendary Kerbonauts that bravely ascend the sky to reach their spacecraft that will take them to new places for a better understanding of our worlds and to build a better future. Group come. We've docked a Starfinder. We're starting the last refueling. Then, we're going to inspect all rooms and double check that all the systems are operational. We will list all resources and inspect our inventory. Initiate engine warming. Navigation is set and ready. Roger, Stars crew. Trans injection schedule in one hour and 46 minutes. Sky Knight shuttle up. Docked. My friends, we are about to go to probably the weirdest places we have ever seen. We're all unsure how it's going to be, and what we're going to find. But we need to be sure that we all agree to go for it. Even though I know your answers, I have to ask you again if you're good or not. Val? Go. Bob? Go. Bill? Go. Jeb? Go. Kirkka, we're performing injection burn. Starting to charge the Giga Ion engine. Giga Ion is charged. Get ready for it, guys. Now our kind fly like a bright angel through the darkness of space. The Starfinder's engine push our kind like the wind would hit the sail of an unstoppable ship. A ship that majestically sails through the ocean towards greatness. Starfinder will travel through space to take us further than before and closer to the great secrets that this universe keeps so well hidden since the beginning of the ages. Giga Ions have reached 100% of thrust. This time it's for good, guys. The efficiency of this engine is barely believable. We have left Kerbin's sphere of influence. Shut down in four, three, two, one. Shut down. Engine's cooling down. Injection successful. We'd like to thank everyone who worked on this project. You have made an awesome spacecraft. Take care of Kerbin for us. Over. Congratulations to you guys. We surely will fly safe. Godspeed.
ever seen something that intriguing? Okay, people, after this next mark, there will be no possibility to turning back. So if you want to give up, speak now. Get your screens, Bill. You need to watch this. We're beginning to gather a lot of speed. Hold on, Bob. It's gonna be okay. I'm gonna be sick. Courage, Bill. I'm sure we'll soon be at the end of the tunnel. Bill and Bob have passed out! Stay focused, Val! Val? Val? Guys? I am, but I feel weird. I can't explain why, but I feel weird too. Same for me. Where do you think we are? Wait! We haven't been anywhere. There's Jewel! We did go through the wormhole, right? Yes, I'm sure we have. Bill, launch the solar system analyzer. Okay. Well, that's unusual. It's the Kerbal system, but I can't connect to any sat or pick up Kerbin radio. It sent us back to our departure point? Something went wrong. We must report to Curbcom. The signal is there, but no one is responding. Long-range communications may have been fried during the journey through the wormhole. So, do we enter the wormhole again? Do you honestly want to go through that again? Oh no, I don't. Okay, so we're heading back manually to Curbcom. I'm feeling weird, guys. Yes, I got a strange feeling too, but I can't explain it. I just can't believe we'll be traveling for another six months, having done nothing.
It's great to see you, Kerbin. Setting retrograde. Prepare for Kerbin capture. Orbiting Kerbin. It's weird. All the sats are there, but it's like no one is listening. Weird indeed. Anyway, we can land on our own. Our lander is built to land on any celestial body. Undocking Starfinder. Request to land on LZ-2. Standing by. This is getting weirder. Maybe the lander communications have been fried, too. So in that case, we'll land without confirmation. Hold up there. I'm going for a vertical landing. Touched down on LZ-2. Confirmed. Asking for crew recovery. Stand by. Well, I would have expected a triumphant welcome. Is this a joke or what? No matter what this is, I've been in space for way too long. I need to go outside now. I'm done too. Let's go check it out. Did they all go on strike or something? It's completely deserted. There always needs to be someone at the tracking station. I hope you have an explanation for why you've made us walk so far, Henry. Henry! I'm talking to you! Um, Henry? I don't know what kind of joke this is, but it's not funny. Turn his chair, Jeb. What the hell is happening? Amanda? Where has this thing taken us? Are they... dead? Or maybe we are the dead ones. Oh my gods, guys! What's happening? Bob, what's happening? How should I know? You are the most educated guy here. Do you have any thoughts? Well... It's clear that the wormhole brought us somewhere. In a lifeless dimension or some kind of a frozen world. 
So all we have to do is to take the wormhole back to return to our world, right? Well, probably. I'm not sure. I would need some time to think about it. Do the time we need to go back through the wormhole. I suggest for you to think about it during the journey back to the real Kerbin. I don't want to stay here any longer. Me too. This place freaks me out. I'm going to take Henry's pen as physical proof. Sorry to interrupt your holiday, Henry, but it's important. Of course it is. Don't waste time. Explain yourself. Starfinder emerged five hours ago from the wormhole. However, we haven't been able to establish contact with them. Perhaps their communication system has been damaged during the journey. Are you sure our antenna are working? They are. However, there's a bigger problem. In addition to not responding, they appear to be inactive. Inactive? They aren't doing anything. No injection, nothing. They have been orbiting Jewel since they emerged. No maneuvers have been recorded since they emerged. We've tried for hours to understand what's going on. Their ship may have suffered damage that makes any commands impossible. Yes, that's what we feared most, even though the ship looks okay. I'm going to send a rescue mission. We cannot leave them like that. They will have enough supplies for us to reach them as they are supposed to do the same trip to Kerbin. Six months to reach them without knowing if they can hear us or not. That's going to be hard to deal with. Rescue team injection to Jewel successful. Estimate arrival in six months and seven days. Fly safe. Over. We're about to intercept Starfinder. We had to hack Starfinder's system at a distance because the docking port shield was closed. We forced it open and we're going for docking right now. Okay, Kerbcom, we've docked to Starfinder. We've initiated a diagnostic. The ship reports no failures in the system. Benji is preparing to inspect the ship. Even though everything looks normal on board, I'm still asking them to suit up just in case the air may have been contaminated. Okay, I have entered Starfinder. The crew hatch looks normal. I'm going to the navigation room. What's happening, Benji? Bob? Kerbcom. Something terrible has happened here. We went back to this broken world? We are doomed forever! We need to pass that cursed wormhole again. Hurry! Bill, try to calm down, please. Panic won't help us. How can I calm down? Don't you see we're trapped in this false world? It's not a false world. Well, it's not the right one either. 
that's for sure. That's peculiar. No kidding. No, I mean, look carefully. They're not placed at the same place than the last time. Some are even missing, and others weren't there before. And look at the date on the clock. Time has passed, and it... Damn. Exactly the same time elapsed that we planned for the mission proper. What are you trying to point out, Bob? The time seems to have kind of updated since we passed through the wormhole again. That's supposed to explain this lifeless copy of our world? Copy? Yes. This is... it's kind of a copy of our world. Well, I thought it was obvious from the first time. No, I mean it copies our world each time we pass through the wormhole. That's why the second time things have moved, we arrived in a copy of the present real dimension. It means that... Time is still going in our world! And, I bet that if we pass through it a third time, we will arrive in another copy of our original dimension, but at an updated time. But Bob, what about the probes that returned from the wormhole? Why have they returned and not us? That's a very interesting question. What has happened to you guys? I finished setting up body preservation. I'm coming back. I had hoped the casualty capsules would never be used. for the return. This ship's navigation system is truly amazing. Injection in four, three, two, one. Injection. suit. Do you happen to, uh, give him your beloved space pin? Of course not. Why? Are you sure you still have it? Yes, I have it here on my desk. And you're extra sure that there's not two of them? It is absolutely unique. My father gave it to me. It was made for the first space flight, and the fingerprints of all directors of the space program are printed on it. But what is the point with what you have found on Bob and my pen? Because Bob has your pen here on his suit. What? No. That's not possible. You will see when we come back that I'm sure it's yours. Or a perfect copy of it, at least. Where did you get that, Bob? We've just finished loading supplies to another trip to the wormhole. Have you figured it out? I don't know. I feel like I'm about to understand something, but I can't. I'm sure that passing through the wormhole again would just bring us to another copy. Probably, 
but we don't have anything else to try. Bob? Are you okay, Bob? We're not in a copy of our world. We're in its reflection. The wormhole surface is acting like a giant mirror. And it brought us to the other side. It physically projects everything like a copy, but it's only a physical reflection. But again, Bob, what about the probes that returned? And why not us? You don't get it, Jeb. What we recovered was a copy of the probe, a perfect physical reflection. The real one is lost on this side. But the soul is unique. It can't be reflected. That's why the Kerbals look dead. So all the things that entered this wormhole, and as a reflection of where they came from, everything that goes through the reflection, end up in the real world as a copy. But not us, because we're not machines and that our souls are something immaterial that can't be reflected? Yes, and that's good news. We can send physical things back to our original world. Well, actually, we already did. Wait a minute, Bob. Yes, Jeb. The second time we took the wormhole to go back to our world, a copy of Starfinder, a copy of us, must have emerged in our real world. They must take us for dead. We need to tell the others. Even though this is mind-blowing, we must stay focused and take advantage of it. Agreed. I can't believe we have to travel through the wormhole again. But this time we have a plan. We're going to record a message, and if I'm right, a copy of this ship, of us, should appear to our original world. When they recover the ship, they will find the message. That will mean another Starfinder out of the wormhole. Henry won't stand idly by. I hope you're right, Bob. Because fuel is becoming an issue. What if they don't find any clues to help us? What are we going to do? We're going to find something. If we went in one way, we can return in another. Jeb, you're the captain of this mission, of this ship, of us. It's up to you to record the message. We're going to explain our problem, and our data. Then, guys, if you want to leave personal messages for your family and friends, you record as much as you need. What's happening that is so important? Something just emerged from the wormhole. What was it? It's the Starfinder, sir. How is that possible? We hardly come to finish shipping it to Kerbin. I know, but we formally identified it. A second Starfinder? What does that mean? No idea, but we have to go retrieve it. We launch a mission immediately. A second rescue mission in one year? I'm not sure the funds are- We will are... run the numbers later. Prepare the launch pad. We'll give them time to reach Starfinder and see our message before taking the wormhole a third time. We will take it in a little less than a year. That should be enough. And hoping they'll get to it. Well, if I understood correctly, there should be a second Starfinder in their dimension. 
Henry will not stand idly by, I am sure. Capcom, we're docking the Starfinder. Take a note that this time the docking shield was open. Okay, so Benji's going to the cockpit. It's impossible. Capcom, there's an onboard message. You need to see it. I'm transmitting it to you now. To anyone who receives it, this is Jebediah Kerman, captain of the Starfinder ship. We're not sure that anyone will ever find this, but if you do, know that we're still here, trapped in another world. We did go through the wormhole. It seems that the wormhole is acting like some kind of mirror. It reflects and projects everything, but physically generating a new copy. So, as you can see, we arrived at some sort of copy of our world. It took us two years to understand it. For two years, we have traveled from Kerbin and through the wormhole in the hope we would join back our world. Every time, we just end up in another copy. In the reflection of the real world, you are our only hope. We will give you some time before we take the wormhole for the third time, so that you can find this message and reply to it. Just leave us a message prominently in the tracking station, and we'll find it. We need to help them. Daniel, we're going to record a message. We will leave it on the main screen until we got news from them. We also have to study this. For now, this stays classified. about to find out. I can't believe it. Val, play it. Dear Star's crew, I hope this message reaches you. We received yours and have taken your situation in consideration. In the name of everyone here, I want to apologize for what happened to you. We are working as hard as we can to help you. First, we have assembled a refueling station in orbit in order to resupply Starfinder. To bring you back, we're going to need to understand how the wormhole works, and for that we're going to study it from the inside. The computers can't seem to decode the data from the other side of the mirror, so all data will have to be sent through manually. We'll leave you equipment that you can dock to Starfinder to gather data inside the wormhole. We might not be on the same side of the mirror, but we're still together. We will bring you home. Starting to manually input the scan data. Star's crew, we have received the first data package, and we are studying it. I am in the process of setting up a commsat in orbit of Joule so we can communicate more easily. Each time you exit the wormhole, plug interface with the sat and you will be able to read our messages. To send us some, record a message, send it to the copy of the sat, send the sat through the wormhole. A copy of it will emerge on our side with your message. We will continue to send you stuff to study the wormhole. We will not stop until we bring you back. We have a problem. What does he want? Nothing good. Mr. President, it's an honor to speak to you. I'll be straight to the point, Henry. You're sucking up the funds at an alarming rate. But sir, you haven't put any restriction on the Starfinder program. I didn't, but there's no more Starfinder project. You were supposed to send Kerbal through the wormhole, discover a new world, and bring them back. Yes, but not everything has gone to plan, and I- And now you're trying to save the program that failed. I'm trying to save the four Kerbals we sent in there. They knew the risk. So what? Are we gonna give up on them? Leave them on their own? That's the role of pioneers. Discover greatness, or fall into darkness. 
I can't believe it. I'm sorry, but we just don't have the resources to help them. We're connected to the sat frequency. There's a private message. I'm playing it. Starfinder crew, I have disconcerting news. I'm sorry to tell you that the government is trying to shut down the Starfinder program and the rescue mission with it. They said that we spent billions for nothing and continue to spend billions in an impossible rescue. But you're not on your own. I have a plan. We already recovered your two Starfinders, and there's as much copy of it in Jewel Orbit that the number of times you went through the wormhole, you can physically duplicate things. That means infinite resources. I'm sure you guys are starting to understand what I'm planning. We could create stuff here on Kerbin. Leave it at your disposal and you will send it through the wormhole. I hate to use your horrible situation, but it would give a reason for the government to not let you are down. Are they serious? They can't accept helping, but can accept profit? It's understandable, Bill. Henry has an excellent idea. Imagine infinite resources. It'll bring Kerbal Kind to a new era. If we can give something, they will need us, and we need them. Let's play the game. I found a plan to make the Starfinder program worth it. We're gonna launch a crazy amount of premium resources and rares materials into space, and leave them in jewel orbit. Star's crew will pass through the wormhole and will arrive in an updated copy of our world. Then, the resource tank will appear for them. They will send it back through the wormhole. So for us, copy of the tank we placed and left in orbit will emerge. Star's crew will take the wormhole again and will arrive in the update copy of our world that now contains two tanks of resources. They will send the two tanks through the wormhole and so two tanks will emerge on our side, meaning now we have four tanks. They will repeat this maneuver again and again. This potentially means infinite resources. Each time they will pass through the wormhole, they will double the amount. Henry, we identified an incredible number of tanks coming out of the wormhole. Dear Starfinder crew, I am pleased to announce to you that with the crazy potential duplication, the program Starfinder will not be shut down. Even better, we're going to build a station around Jewel to intercept all the resources you duplicate. And this station will be easy to build, with you on the other side to duplicate part. On this gigantic station, we will be able to study the wormhole up close and run experiments. You are not alone. We will do everything needed to bring you back on the right side. You have my word. Now let's get started. We believe that in order to return to the right side of the mirror, you'll have to break it. And for that, you'll need to go faster, push harder than he pushed you back. We are about to develop a technology that will bend the wormhole space by going faster than the physics properties allow. Wow. Henry, you were serious about it. Henry is a genius. If there's someone that will find the solution, it will be him. And the crew might just be docked to our ship. I hope it will work. Charging antimatter core. Hold on, guys. This technology looks serious. What's happening? Is the wormhole closing in on us? They're right on the reflection line lane. Perfectly between the two sides. We're going to hit it!
has it worked? How could we know? We still don't have any comms. It looks bad. And we have lost several pieces of Starfinder. It's a miracle the whole ship wasn't torn apart. Still no communications, Bill. Well, I can't find any sat. I can't even find Kerbin. I don't believe there's a Kerbin anymore. Why do you say that? Bill, turn your head. Or, more accurately, when are we? What happened to Jules' moons? Wait. Yes, I detect a ship in Jules' orbit. I'm transmitting you the coordinates to Rendezvous Jeb. All right. Come on, Starfinder. It's the last little effort. How can it still fly? Is that? It looks empty. How do they simulate gravity without spinning? It looks like there's a video message. Record message to the Star's crew. If you are alive and have found this, please pay attention. I'm Jerry, Henry's grandson. I'm recording this 86 years after your last wormhole entry. You probably have thousands of questions that I can't answer, but I can't explain what happened, so it might answer some of your questions. After you received my grandfather's warp technology, we figured you used it, but we haven't had any news from you. After two years, you've been considered dead. The government has developed AI to take up your role on the other side, to continue exploiting infinite resource duplication provided by the mirror, as we've come to call it. Henry was destroyed by the fact that his work might have caused your death. His last days were full of remorse and anguish. My father took the lead of the space program and promised him that he would find a way to prove that your deaths were not his fault. So we have worked hard on the subject and discovered that Henry actually invented a warp ability that was only working inside the wormhole due to its space bending property. He figured that you went faster than the wormhole and space time could allow it and send you further in time. We were pretty sure that you would emerge one day, one side or the other, and if you're listening to this, it means we were right. While we were hopefully waiting for your return in the future, things got complicated here. We are not entirely sure if it was due to the wormhole apparition or the fact that we overused the duplication of worlds. But the anomaly started to appear here, and the most significant one is the increasing mass of celestial bodies. It's like the solar system is trying to balance the forces emitted by the physical reflection of the wormhole's worlds. Eventually, the gravity of Kerbin became painful and not livable anymore. Celestial bodies all around the solar system began to collide. The worst part of the anomaly is the fact that the sun's mass grew exponentially without changing its size. We fear that it may collapse in on itself, creating in the process a black hole. We are not lost for all of that. Kerbal Kind has entered a new era of their history. To have infinite resources to orbit near a wormhole brought our tech and our understanding of physics way beyond what we could have ever imagined. Our technology has advanced so far that today we have the ability to leave this system, to reach a planet much like Kerbin 21 light years from here. 
Using the technology pioneered by Henry, we found ways to bend space-time and travel much faster. It will take our massive ships 104 years to reach our new home, which we've named Sosti Diastasi. With this ship, the Andreas, which we left in case of your emergence, you could join us in approximately six years. The onboard computer has the maneuvers plotted. You just have to start the launch sequence. I will more than likely be gone, but if that happens, I hope that one day we will see this ship arrive on Sosti Diastasi. Now go, Star's crew. Fly, fly, faster than light. scheduled a gravity turn using the sun, but there's no more sun anymore. Mal and I will have to improvise. Hold on. side or just in another copy we'll only know when we reach the new planet 